I came across this great file folder uh, as I was searching through ArtStation and uh, Call of Duty Black Ops and I said let's let's uh, model this so over here in Blender I'm looking from a front orthographic view I just press 1 to get there and I'm going to bring in this as a reference image and slide it over to the side and I'll scale it up just just to have that there we can easily look at that I'll come up here click there click the arrow and do that so I can't select it okay so now we've got that we can look at that anytime we want to so I'm going to start with shift a mesh plane go into edit mode and rotate x90 I'll just pull it up a little bit SX to scale it in the X and we'll make it about about that size Maybe pull that up a little bit okay so here we go we'll make that selectable again and just uh, bring it in a little closer okay so we're going to do this uh, this part here the sort of uh, curved parts here so back into edit mode control R to put an edge loop down and then control B and split it and as I pull this out I'm looking at this rounded part here this section is going to create that so it's not going to be exactly the same but control R right there control R right there where they fall I'm going to press 2 to go into edge selection shift and select both of them and now I'm looking at this part here I'm going to scale these in the X and pull them out a little ways. I guess like about there. And now I need a couple of levels. I need to come down to this level. And I need to come down to that level. So control R here to do a horizontal one. And I'm going to pull this up to about maybe, maybe there. That would be the bottom of this. And I'm just going to drop another one in right there okay so that's what I've done now I'm going to press 3 to go into face selection and I'm going to select these and that X faces so now I've sort of got what this has but it's very square but we're going to round that off soon what I'm going to do next is I'm going to press A to select it all and I'm going to duplicate this shift D I'm going to pull it out and this is going to create the thickness of this the inside so I'm just pulling it out a little ways like this deselect and now I'm going to create the sides and the bottom so I'm going to in edge selection number two click here and hold control and click the bottom edge shift click there and control to click that control E bridge edge loops and I've got a side on there and do the same on this side Shift and Control Control E Bridge Edge Loops. And now I just need to do that on the bottom. This one, press Control to get that one. Hold down Shift. This one, press Control to get that one. Control E Bridge Edge Loops. Let's select the whole thing. I just want to look at that. It's a little bit thin, but that's okay. All ten recalculate outside in case any of my polys are flipped. Okay, now I might want to come in here and in wireframe and one for vertex selection. Press B and box select this, and I can make it a little bit bigger. Okay, back in the solid view. Now, what I'm going to do is this is the back and this is the front. I want the back to be a solid piece, so. I'm going to select those edges, I'm in edge selection, and then press F to make a face. And then I'm going to select, hold down shift, select all of these, and I'm going to bring them up so that they're level with this. So I'm going to press control 1 to look exactly from the back. E to extrude, and I'm going to start pulling it up. I'm going to click on snap to edge, I'm going to pull up, and I'm going to mouse over that edge there. Turn that off. Now, the only thing I need to worry about is to make sure that these 
vertices are actually merged. So I'm going to go to wireframe, select them, merge at center. And the other one is over here. This one. Merge at center. I'll select it all, go M, merge by distance, just to be sure. Okay, so we've got that. Okay, now I'm going to add some thickness with solidify. And click on even thickness. And see how thick I want this to be. It's not actually too bad right there. And so I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And I'm going to look down from the top. And you can see that I've got this stuff coming off like that. I'm going to want to actually select the back faces and extrude them up a little bit so that we have this piece that's higher. But I don't want to do it like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom right in. And this is the top here. I'm going to press K for the knife tool. I'll come here, press C to constrain it and go straight. And the space bar. I'm going to do that again and come up. And now in edge selection, I just press 2. I can select that and dissolve it. And now I have this. Okay. It's a lot easier to select this and it'll come up straight. So you can do that on the other side as well. I'm looking down from the top. Okay. For the knife tool. Go to there and space bar. C. Space bar. Dissolve edge. Okay. I can now press 3 for face selection and select all these pieces going across on the back. And don't forget that little one. There I can angle it a little bit. And now what I can do is I can extrude this up and it'll be a bit nicer. Okay, like that. So far so good. Okay. Now what we need to do is I want to round these edges so that it looks like this. I want those rounded. But I don't have a lot of room to bevel. Here, let's see if I can zoom in on that. Press the period key. I don't have a lot of room to bevel this corner, so I'm going to select this edge. And I'm going to come over to the other side. And holding shift, I'm going to select that edge. So just the top parts. And actually, I can zoom in. And I'm going to scale in the X, SX. And I'm pushing. And just going to move it out of the way. And now I can select that edge. And this edge. I'll just look on this side. And I can Control B. And I can pull quite a bit. Round my mouse up. I'm just going to get a bunch of segments in there. So I've got this curve there. Okay, we're going to do some similar curves on these pieces. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to come in and select this edge and this edge. And the same thing on this side. This edge and this edge. And now, Control B, pull, so you get a nice curve. Use the same number of segments as before. All right. And finally, we'll do the middle part. This edge. And holding down Shift and getting that one. Turning it around, getting this one. And this one. And I'll just zoom back a bit. Control B. And give myself a nice curve like that. And I'm happy with that. I don't need it to sort of angle in. Okay, next I'm going to save. And I'm going to add a bevel. Just watch it. You just see a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and do three. And I'm going to make sure I shade smooth. And then I'm going to add weighted normal, auto smooth. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to change the type here to both. I'm going to slide these quite far up and they'll just give a nicer texture as we do this. OK. 
Okay, so that is my file folder. We've got a little bit of a bevel on it. And then, of course, you could do a piece of paper on the inside of that just by adding a plane rotate X 90. Look from the front, I'll scale this in the X. You're not going to see it very well, you're only going to see you know the top like that I'll just move it inside a little ways and then add solidify but make it um, maybe 0 0.04 or something let's make sure our polys are facing the right way they are Okay, and that's what we come up with for the modeling of the file folder. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, unwrap this. And I think what I'll do is I will select this. It'll make a new material. And I'll call this one. And I'm just going to hide that one. I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to unwrap this and texture it. Okay, let's make sure I save. I'll go to UV editing. And what I might do for this one is I'm going to try a smart UV project. Smart UV project. Let's try uh, 03. And I'll get this. I want to make sure that my size is 2048. And what I'll do is I'll use UV Pack Master 3 to pack it. And we'll see how well that does. Just like that. I may need to make some adjustments. I'll go ahead and save that. So now what I'll do is I'll export this as an FBX and bring it into Substance Painter. There it is. Okay, so file folder was all I brought in. Down here, I am going to add an ambient occlusion channel. And I'll bake this at 1024, and we'll see how she goes. Use low poly as high poly and uncheck ID. Okay, it looks all right so far. Let's delete that layer. Under Smart Materials, I'm going to choose Paper. This is a Smart Material from Substance Share. So it's a free Smart Material. I'm going to delete those. And for the base color, I'm just going to make it a little bit more like that. Alright, so it looks, looks pretty nice. Um, I could come over here. So that's my paper layer, that's fine. Let's make a new layer and choose just maybe color. And over here, I can choose alphas and choose font. And the typewriter. And just type anything, you know. Top secret, of course. Let's make sure that my color, let's say black, and I'll switch to orthographic view, and just it will just see how it looks if I just click something in there. You know, so I could put some text like that if I wanted. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is create a fill layer and a black mask. Change this. I probably just need color. Um, and change this color to like just a almost black and we'll try a smart mask and put like uh say say ground dirt we'll try that okay so that's a little bit much i 
maybe just something like that. Just a little bit. Even just that could do the trick. And that's pretty much, uh, pretty much it. If I wanted to do any more, like a little label type thing, a white label, I've got this one. That's better. And let's rotate that one like that. And yeah, maybe that's on the inside there. So you can have that kind of a label. Pull that down there. We'll get some of that dirt on there. And um, I could even cut some off using, uh, let's see, try the mold brush uh, as an eraser. size there and I can increase it there okay well that's the general idea okay so I've got a file folder now and I can export those textures and so I'm going to go ahead and do that I'm back in blender in the shading tab Shift Control T. Get all of those. Come back to layout. Let's hide the empty. folder and if I wanted to I could come in here and I could add say hue saturation and I could hold shift pull it up change it a little bit I could change the color This piece, pull it down a little, maybe, maybe it comes to there, and then that material, I can color pick that if I wanted. And there it is. And then just change the HDRI if I wanted to, if I wanted to, to view it slightly differently. That's basically what I wanted to create, uh, create there. Cool. Thanks for watching.